Hi, this is Dan Stolbarg, and welcome to this week's uh, Kafir Middle East Update. And this is the week of June 23rd. Now, I want to encourage you all to make sure that you get the PDF that goes along with this YouTube video. It's very important because a lot of the uh, pictures that are going to make sense out of this report you'll find on the PDF. In fact, because of our time constraints, there are many times that I don't have enough time to cover everything that's in the PDF and you want to make sure you grab that. So when you get your daily email for the Kafir uh, Fellowship, you'll notice at the very top there will be a link for both the YouTube when it's up as well as a link for the PDF. Make sure you get both of those together. Also you'll notice on that first page uh, we'll be promoting our upcoming tours and the one that's uh, not so much right around the corner but we have about 10 weeks to get the word out will be our inaugural, our very first Holy Ground Explorations tour to Israel, which we call Journey Through Israel. Once again, take the time, go to our website at www.holygroundexplorations.com and check it out. With that, we need to jump right into this week's uh, material. I'll begin with the different attacks that took place uh, both in Jerusalem and in the north last week. Last Friday, one young Israeli was murdered and another one was wounded by Arab terrorists. A Danny Gonin was 25 years old and was murdered when a Palestinian terrorist came up to his car asking for direction and then fired a gun into his chest. The Palestinians to this time have issued no condemnation whatsoever uh, while some, of course, Palestinian factions have praised the attack. The other uh, person that was uh, injured is recovering at this time. Then last week, there was a border, last weekend, there was a border patrolman that was stabbed right outside the Damascus Gate uh, in Jerusalem. He's currently in critical condition, but latest reports is that he is recovering. Once again, Hamas has taken to social media uh, after this stabbing to hail the actions of the attacker as heroic. Uh, the UN, a lot's going on uh, this particular week with the report that's coming out um, regarding Operation Protective Edge. <clears throat> This article is entitled, The UN, the U.S., and Israel. Former Israeli envoy, envoy to uh, mm -hmm. Washington, Michael Orion, said that the United States is likely not to veto an expected United Nations Security Council resolution calling for the creation of the Palestinian state. The possibility of the withdrawal of the U.S. cover for Israel at Security Council was first speculated back in November of 2014 and was openly implied by the Obama administration officials in March of this year. State Department spokesperson Jan Paskey said at the time that, and this according to the Wall Street Journal, we are currently evaluating our approach. We are not going to prejudge what we would do if there were or was UN action. Once again, my friends, this will be the very first time that the United States in regards to this Security Council will actually not veto and support Israel. So once again, when you look at that Genesis 12, I'll bless those that bless thee, I'll curse those that curse thee. Uh, I'm afraid that the US at this time is putting themselves on the other side of that equation where we uh, should be anticipating the curse of God rather than the blessing of God. Now back to this whole concept of a two-state solution. Uh, this article uh, I've entitled, Who Knew? Um, Fatah recognizes Israel's state, uh, Israel's right to exist and that should be with a series of 
question marks. Israel maintains that the PLO must recognize Israel as the Jewish state, they, that they have a right to exist as a crucial element in any peace agreement. Uh, Palestinian negotiator Saib uh, Arakat claims that the PLO has already done so, but wishes to retract this recognition. The PLO leader recommends that the Palestinian leadership, quote, consider retracting its res recognition of Israel until the U.S. or until the Israeli government issues a reciprocal recognition of the Palestinian state. As I said, they have. They have recognized Israel. Who knew? He claims that the PLO, under the leadership of arch-terrorist Yasser Arafat, recognized the state of Israel in 1988. However, Israel maintains that the Palestinians have never recognized Israel as a Jewish state. And Palestinian Authority, the current leader, Muhammad Abbas, has repeatedly rejected requests to do so. Uh, once again, head knocker, head scratcher, flabbergasted, but stay tuned, you're going to get a little bit more. Uh, there's an article I don't have time to go through. I just want to read the uh, title that the UN is hell-bent on remaining anti-Israel. Make sure you take the time to read that one over. Uh, the terror tunnels. This is one of those I, I promised head-knocking or flabbergasted or whatever the case may be. This is a report that just recently came out regarding Operation Protective Edge. The report purports to be objective, but it sounds at times like a bad joke to indicate that the use of the tunnels by Hamas was legitimate and to assert that the group actually issued warnings to Tel Aviv before sending rockets. Um, it's just insanity as we look at these accusations that are made against Israel. The report notes that, quote, we cannot conclusively determine the intent of Palestinian armed groups with regard to the construction and the use of these tunnels. However, the commission observed that during the period under examination, the tunnels were only used to conduct attacks directed at IDF positions in Israel in the vicinity of the Green Line, which were, as they put it, legitimate military targets. In other words, they will not condemn the presence of the terror tunnels. They're saying there was some legitimate use for them. I, I don't know if you've ever taken the time to Google these terror tunnels and to look at some of the videos that they have, but let me let me just assure you, in case you're wondering, there was there's no purpose to these tunnels than to strike fear and plan attacks into Israel. Um, there's an article here. I put sarcastically, is this progress? There was a tiny Spanish village of Castillo Matahudios, which literally means camp kill Jews. And on Monday, officials have voted to actually change that name to the Jewish Hill Camp. This is in Spanish following a referendum and a regional government approval. The village has about 50 inhabitants and they voted to change the name, but documents shown that from the year 1627, actually from 1492 to 1627, that's when this name was given to this city. And once again, the name in English means kill Jews. And so I guess we should say we're actually making progress because We've uh, finally decided that that name's not appropriate, and this little Spanish village is now wanting to be known as the Jews' Hill Camp. Unbelievable. Um, you probably heard, but last week there was an uh, attack or arson in the Church of the Loaves and Fishes in um, 
next to Tabka on the northern side of the Sea of Galilee. Uh, Israel's up in arms over all of this. Uh, Shin Bet has launched an investigation. Uh, the officials have stated this was a cowardly, despicable act. It's strongly condemned and it states that this attack on the principles of interfaith tolerance is an attack on the state of Israel's most crucial values. And so uh, millions of dollars was of damage was done. It has reopened, but once again we want to report uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly in terms of what's going on in Israel. Now, this is my last report. Um, well, I'll give you two more. Very quickly, let me talk about Gush Katif. It was 10 years ago that uh, Chuck and I had the opportunity to visit Gush Katif before uh, Ariel Sharon had given it back to, or handed it over to Hamas. Uh, it was absolutely gorgeous. The greenhouses were amazing. And as you know, this split Israel down the middle in terms of orange and blue, and um, it was shut down. And to this day, the question is, is what has Israel gotten for having given Kush Katif and uh, Gaza back to Hamas, but more than, what, 50,000 rockets that have been aimed at them. But today, I just saw this article. Today, if you were to visit, visit Gush Katif, what would you find? It says, among the many attractions available to Palestinian children in the era formerly known as Gush Katif, there's a theme park, there's water slides, there's a zoo, excuse me, and there's a Hamas terror camp. Hundreds of teenagers aged 12 and up trained there as Hamas shapes the future fighters of its military wing, the Al-Qasim Brigades. The teens practice live fire, they learn how to read maps, and they learn how to offer first aid, aid as well as practicing the art of kidnapping IDF soldiers. Once again, peace, peace in the Middle East, peace partners, the U.S. is going to pressure Israel in the upcoming months to concede and to form a second state, a two-state solution, it's being called. And then finally, the quote of the week, and then as I mentioned, make sure you grab that PDF because the information here is vital for you to read. The quote is, uh, quote, all the current troubles in the world are all because of that blankety-blank little country, Israel. Why should the world be in danger of World War III because of those people? And this was spoken by Daniel Bernard, the French ambassador to England in December of 2001. And I've now given you some background here. Is World War III coming because of this blankety-blank little country? and not because of that nice, Islamic, genocidal um, regime. And so what you'll find on the PDF as we close is a list of just the events that have transpired in 2015 at the hands of radical Islamists. Once again, we want to encourage you to invite people to join Kafir again, just have them email me at dan at khouse dot not sorry, dan at hg kafir k f i r dot com. That's dan at k g h g k f i r dot com. I'll get that right sooner or later. God bless you, and I hope you have a great week. Shalom.